My mom saw her that day um, across the street from where we live in the other apartment complex. And that was the last time that my mom seen her. Like she disappeared after that. Someone seen something. No one just go missing without anybody seeing something. A 20 year old woman known as the Facebook queen amongst her friends and family gives them all great concern when her social media accounts go silent. Last seen in front of her own apartment building by a family member that she actually lived with, many are asking and wondering, where exactly did she go? It's time to turn on the searchlight for Lakira DeJour Goldsmith. Welcome back to Brain Scratch Searchlight. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for caring about these cases like I do. Montgomery is the capital city in the state of Alabama and the county seat of Montgomery County. According to Wikipedia, it was named for Continental Army Major General Richard Montgomery. And as of the 2020 census, Montgomery's population was well over 200,000 people. That makes it the second most populous city in Alabama after Huntsville. In addition to housing many Alabama government agencies, Montgomery has a large military presence due to Maxwell Air Force Base, universities, and many cultural and art attractions. Downtown Montgomery lies along the southern bank of the Alabama River, about six miles downstream from the confluence of the Coosa and Tallapoosa Rivers. Despite the government and military imprint on the city, there is also a much darker side to it. Back in 2009, Montgomery's crime rates were favorable compared to other large Alabamian cities such as Huntsville, Mobile, and Birmingham. However, crime rose in the 2010s and continued to rise into the 2020s, leading to a record high of over 320 shooting victims and over 77 homicide victims in 2021 alone. In 2022, Montgomery's violent crime rate was 514 occurrences for every 100,000 residents. Lakira Goldsmith grew up in the years that this violence began to grip the city. She was born to Marshall Goldsmith on July 24, 1998. Known as Pig to her friends and family, Lakira would try to help anyone who needed it and was the type of young lady who would light up a room when she entered it even with her severe asthma and when that would flare up sometimes so badly that it required hospital visits lakira was always looking out for others marcel says that even when it was most difficult for her daughter to just breathe on her own she just wouldn't let anything stop her from caring about other people in 2018 lakira was 20 years old and the mother of an adorable toddler named armani she was a doting mother who loved her son and her close-knit family very much. On November 27th, she was picked up at the apartment that she shared with her grandmother and son in the 4500 block of Narrow Lane Road. Her boyfriend was taking her for a night out. In the early morning hours of the 28th, Lakira's grandmother heard a car pull up outside of their complex, and she wondered if it was her granddaughter coming back from her big date night. So she headed to the window and she saw that it was indeed Lakira. Her grandmother, being the caring woman that she is, scolded Lakira a bit, yelling at her from the window that she should have been wearing a coat. It was a cold night. She didn't see Lakira actually enter the building, but she went to bed knowing that her granddaughter was safe and home. The last time she actually saw her granddaughter, she was standing outside of the Red Lions apartment complex across the street, and somehow, Lakira would not make it back to the apartment just a short walk away that night. Could she have possibly been mistaken about the young woman that she saw and assumed that it was Lakira when it actually was someone else? Well, while we don't know exactly what time Lakira was dropped off, it seems that we do have another eyewitness that confirms she was indeed there that night. At 2 a.m., the maintenance worker for the Red Lions apartments found Lakira outside. She asked to borrow his cell phone and he let her use it. To give her some privacy, he actually walked into the apartment building for a few minutes before returning outside. When he did, he found his phone sitting on the complex's steps, but Lakira was nowhere to be seen. Another important question is, 
Why would Lakira, someone known as a Facebook queen who was always on social media, not have a phone of her own? Did she have her phone but want to place a call or send a message from a different number? Did she leave her phone somewhere and she was trying to call it to see if someone would answer and tell her where it was? We don't know. The next morning, when her grandmother awoke, she found that Lakira was not at home. Now, it wasn't completely uncommon for Lakira to disappear from time to time, but she was always easily found by her friends or her family. They would simply message her. When her grandmother took a look at Lakira's social media, she saw that all communication had just stopped the night before. As the family became more and more concerned, Marcel, her mother, tried searching. She went to one of Lakira's friends' homes that she was known to stay at. It was only a few miles away, and she started asking around there. According to WAKA.com, Marcel believes that Lakira may have been in the Newtown neighborhood, based on reports from people who say that they think that they saw her there that day. So Marcel drove from the Newtown neighborhood where Lakira's friend lived back to Narrow Lane Road, looking but still not finding any signs of her. The next day on November 29th, Lakira was reported missing. Marcel would tell the press, when she went missing, I called Montgomery police. They came and did a missing person report. And basically that was it. Marcel said that she didn't feel as if she was taken seriously. And it had been suggested by the police that Lakira had just taken off. Everyone in her circle of friends and family agreed, though, Lakira would never run off, and she certainly would never leave her son. It quickly became apparent to her family that they would get little to no help in their search, so they took matters into their own hands. While friends and family searched on foot, Marcel tried to get as much media attention for her daughter's case as possible. She also took to social media and created the Finding Lakira Pig Goldsmith group on Facebook. Even today, she posts just about every day, not only about Lakira's case, but featuring other missing persons as well. Lakira's younger sister, Michaela Blackwell, also posts about her love for her sister and how the pain is affecting their mother. She even said that she would give her own life in exchange for Lakira's. She posted a song referencing Armani's pain. Quote, he has to live his life without his mom, she sang on the video, which gained thousands of views and it helped raise more exposure to Lakira's case. Exposure that was seemingly lacking from a source that can really help in all types of missing persons cases. WTKR.com reported that according to the study, Missing White Woman Syndrome, an empirical analysis of race and gender disparities in online news coverage of missing persons, Black people were significantly underrepresented in the population of missing persons who received coverage, even though missing people of color make up nearly 40% of all missing persons cases. The analysis also found white women were overrepresented in news coverage, accounting for more than half of missing persons coverage when they make up only 30% of actual missing persons cases. Quote, if black people go missing at double their occurrence in the actual population, which happens to be the case, there should be double the stories. But in fact, it's the opposite, said Kyle Pope, the editor-in-chief and publisher of the Columbia Journalism Review. Thankfully, this is an issue that has been spoken about much more often in recent years. And while it took almost a year, finally, local news outlets did start to feature Lakira's case and speak to Marshall. She told them about how law enforcement's efforts have stayed pretty much the same, and when they were directly asked for any update on the case, the department has declined to comment, saying the investigation was ongoing. It makes you wonder if they're still holding on to that initial assumption, that for some reason she just ran off and left it all behind. Marcel feels that race, age, and background have indeed played a role in the investigation into her daughter's disappearance. Quote, when it comes to white people or college students, they put in effort to get search teams to look for them. But where's Lakira's search team? It's not fair to my daughter. She's a missing person too. They should take every case seriously and put in the effort to find these people, she said. The search for Lakira has led her family along Birmingham Highway, Highway 80 near Hope Hall and back to Newtown again. 
It's real frustrating, but I have to follow all the leads and I give them all to the police because you never know, there could be some truth in one of them, Marshall would tell the press. Lakira's family still pushes forward and continues to search for her. A press conference was held by them on the state capitol steps on March 7th, 2020, in the hopes of not only raising awareness to her case, but maybe putting a little pressure on those responsible for doing work into the investigation. The family asked for more resources in the search for Lakira, and they renewed their plea for any information that could help with finding her. Marshall says that there have been no recent new leads or updates on her daughter's case. Quote, it's been a nightmare. I can barely think, and it's just hard for me day to day getting out of bed and just going on with my day. Many times she has felt as though she was the only person fighting to find her daughter. Understanding this case has a lot of challenges. First of all, there are numerous conflicting reports. While it seems the maintenance man story is the most cited, there are other versions where she was last seen actually speaking to a friend or even her boyfriend outside of the complex. With law enforcement not really talking or taking the opportunity to capitalize on the media that is now being generated on this case, we really have no insight into the possibilities that her boyfriend has been investigated or maybe he's been ruled out. We just don't know. It seems to me that omitting that information from the public understanding is kind of unfair to both sides. To people close to Lakira, they likely know who this guy is and they might be casting suspicions in his direction. On the flip side, if there is an investigation looking into that direction, law enforcement hasn't released enough information to enable the public to know what might be helpful in terms of tips that should be called in. The same kind of goes for the maintenance man. Has he been ruled out? Has his phone been checked to see how Lakira last used it? Has her phone been traced? These are all questions unanswered. And that, in a way, also contributes to the perspective that law enforcement might not be doing everything in their power to help find Lakira, which may not actually be true. The type of complex that Lakira disappeared from presents its own set of problems. This area is known to be very run down, with many of the apartments not actually being rented, but not necessarily empty. Several complexes in this area are essentially a breeding ground for criminal activity, bringing people into the equation that might have no documentation or tracing to tie them to these locations. It's reported that the city council has tried to address this, but they're met with one roadblock after another. By the time that they're able to find the owner of one of these complexes in question to try to hold them accountable from, for the property's condition, the complex will be sold to someone else. So the whole search process has to be started all over again, creating this never-ending cycle of chasing down responsibility and delays in trying to actually clear these complexes out. This is a case where a crime of opportunity is also a very strong possibility. And Marshall does firmly believe that someone saw something happen to her daughter. She's asked for the public's help, but not just in the neighborhood that Lakira disappeared in, but she's asking for help from all over the country. Quote, I find myself questioning God every day, asking why me? Why my child? It's so hard to keep the faith when someone that you love so much can just get snatched away from you and you don't know what's going on. I need people to help me. Every day she searches for Lakira while raising her other two children and Lakira's son, Armani. Lakira Goldsmith, who goes by the nickname Pig, stands at 5 foot 5 inches tall and weighs between 140 and 180 pounds. Her eyes are brown and her hair is black, but at the time of her disappearance, she was wearing blonde hair extensions with black roots. She was also seen wearing a black velvet knee-length dress, a silver rhinestone choker necklace, silver rhinestone earrings, and a silver lip ring. She has a snake eye tongue piercing as well. Lakira suffers from asthma, and she needs medication for it, medication which was left behind. She's been hospitalized multiple times for severe asthma attacks. Please, share this video with friends and acquaintances in Alabama and the surrounding states to help us raise awareness to this case. 
If you want to support the family, there is a link below for their GoFundMe, which states that funds will go to a reward regarding information in Lakira's disappearance, lawyer fees, possibly a private investigator, and of course, Lakira's son, Armani. On behalf of our amazing supporters and myself, we have already made a donation there. If you would like to join, please click that link below. There's also another link you'll see below to a petition asking the governor of Alabama for more assistance on the Kira's case. And of course, if you have any information, please contact the Montgomery Police Department at 334-625-2810. If you need to remain anonymous for any reason, you can also call Central Alabama Crime Stoppers at 334-215-STOP. That's 334-215-7867. Since 2015, we have always run limited commercial ads for the benefit of the viewers and the families that we're trying to help. Obviously, we can't do that without support. A big thank you to new patrons Tabitha Tyndall and Sandy Shirley. If you'd like to help us, please visit lordandarts.com. There you can sign up for Patreon, sign up for PayPal, buy merchandise, or even just buy us a coffee like Candy Bishop recently did. We really appreciate your support on our mission to run as few ads as possible while we try to help as many cases as we can. Thank you to WSFA.com, MontgomeryAdvisor.com, The Charlie Project, NamUs, OriginalNewsBreak.com, InvestigationDiscovery, Medium.com, WAKA, WTKR, Wikipedia, and WeScripts.BrightSpotCDN.com for information contributing to today's story. Also, a very big thank you to everyone that is supporting Marshall, Armani, and Lakira's family during this very tough time. Let's all keep our eyes, ears, and hearts open and looking for Lakira Goldsmith. I'll see you again here soon on the Lord and Arts channel. Mm -hmm.